What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking. I'm gonna show you a 45 second clip of a real Omega Seamaster chronograph next to a fake one. After the clip, I'll get into some truths and also some myths on how you could have spotted the fake. I'll preface this by saying it's always a little bit easier to spot the fake one when you've got a real one right next to it. Let's get into it. So I made a video about seven months ago about how I tried to do my very first watch flip, but ended up getting scammed. For months, the video didn't get much traction, but over the last 30 days, it's kind of blown up with over 30,000 views. With the views came a lot of comments. Before I get into the comments, and I will get into the comments, the reason for this video today is to go back and see if I could have prevented myself from getting scammed by doing a little bit more homework and a little bit more due diligence. At this point in the video, let me just say this. Making that first video was just a way for me to share my experience. I never said I was an expert. I'm just somebody that likes watches. I say all of this because there's probably a number of you watching, probably in the same boat. You like watches, you might not be an expert on the subject, but you're always looking for an opportunity for a little side hustle. With that said, let's jump right into the comments. At one point, I called the chronograph a chronometer. Not a big deal when the video has a few hundred views, but at this point I hear about it multiple times a day. Which is fine, I screwed up. Seriously though, I do enjoy all of the positive comments. Thank you so much. But as you might imagine, there are a lot of comments in there that said, oh, it should have been so obvious because of this and because of that. And that's kind of what prompted me to make this video. I don't want to call anybody out. I'm sure their intentions were good. But let's see which one of those comments were myths and which are actually true. And after that, I actually did do a lot of research myself. And I'll give a few tips that weren't mentioned in the comments on how to spot a fake. Does that sound good? I actually got excited when I was preparing to make this video, so I hope you enjoy it. The one on the left was actually my video. That was the fake. The one on the right was actually a real one. Let's dive down into the comments and see why. The first comment had to do with the silver ring around the pearl being too thick. Let's see if that's true or not. I'm going to go on a website that obviously sells real ones, and this is my watch here. Here's that ring around that pearl. Let me see if I can zoom in, and here it is. And I'll compare this next to my fake watch. As far as the ring itself, it looks pretty close guys, so I think this one's a myth. Next we get into a comment from Zach Matthews. He mentioned the placement of the helium valve, and he also talked about the loom on the bezel itself. Let's start with that helium valve. You see on the genuine one, the valve is kind of centered with the 10 o'clock position, maybe slightly south of it. On the fake one, you see that the diameter of the helium valve, the, the south end of it, kind of starts where the 10 o'clock position starts, maybe a little north of it. Either way, it's easy to see that on the fake one, it's too high up. So Zach, good job, that one's true. And then he mentions the ring around the pearl. You guys probably noticed this already on the last example, but while the ring itself is not too thick, the size of the pearl is not right. And certainly the placement is not centered. So Zach, two for two, good job. Then we get into a comment by a viewer named Jason. Jason has a lot to say, which is fine. The first thing he says is about the placement of the 20 on the bezel. Now, if you look at it, I'm gonna put this one as a maybe. You guys judge for yourself. I see what he's saying. The zero on the 20 seems to be misaligned. And I agree, but if you look at the real one, you notice that the numbers, the 20, the 30, the 40, and the 50, they're aligned straight, not aligned with the circumference of the bezel. So there are gonna be spacing issues between the number and the bezel. You can tell more on the zeros than the numbers itself. Again, this one's a maybe. And then the second thing that Jason mentions is that I should have known it was a fake, because of the scratch on the bezel. Jason says that these should be ceramic, so its scratch should not be clear underneath since it's ceramic. Another one of my viewers actually corrects him, wristwatch addiction. Now, if anybody's an expert here, obviously it's not me, 
It's this guy. Check out his response. This guy knows what he's talking about. Just for fun, I also found a clip of a guy reviewing this watch. Here's what he says. It's an anodized aluminum insert, so while it's not as scratch resistant as ceramic, it also can't shatter or fracture. You'll appreciate that there are shouldered crown guards, but they are not screw downs. You can actually start and stop the chronograph 600 meter water resistance and all without any need to unscrew chronograph push so that was a good video the bezel's not ceramic and the pushers are also not screw down which myths another comment from a viewer next we get into a comment about the flyback so in my first video i showed that the watch was screwed up a little bit it resets the 58 instead of at zero for me it wasn't a dead giveaway it was fake it might have just needed some calibration. So a viewer, Alex, calls me out and says that that should have been a dead giveaway. Another viewer, Dutch Claus, kind of gets excited and calls him out on it. He goes on to say that that's actually happened to him on his original Omega. And after he got it serviced, he got it fixed. So, sorry Alex, your comment was a myth. So before I get into the second part of my video, I just want to say that's it for the comments portion of the video. In all seriousness, guys, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just trying to show how difficult it is to kind of keep up with all the iterations of this watch. Even if you think you're an expert and you think you know so much so that you wanted to call me out, which is fine, some of those were actually myths. The takeaway though is, had I done a little bit more research, there were a lot of truths in those comments and they may or may not have been easy tells at the time I was going to buy that watch. So the second part of this video is I did do some more research. Outside of the comments, I believe there are other tells that I could have known before putting myself in that position to buy that fake watch. I'm going to go through those three or four things that I found and then I'm going to show you the open case. Yep, that's right. I did find some pictures of the movement inside. How did I get those, you ask? Well, if you saw my first video, you saw that I sold it to my buyer already then I notified him it was a fake. It was already en route to him in Texas at the time. Once I told him it was a fake, he asked me if it was okay for him to open it up and check it out. And I said, fine, whatever. So he did that, sent me some pictures before sending the watch back to me. So I am excited to show you that compared to a real move. Here we go. So we'll start with the date window. The date window is in the correct position and everything like that. But just notice how the date's kind of hard to read. Compare that with this picture where it's centered, very easy to read. Granted, yes, this picture has been photoshopped. The contrast is really high. But still, looking at this watch in person, it was just a little bit off. Next is the band. The band's supposed to be a nice premium alligator leather band. This one seemed to be off. It was thin. It was, seemed a little flimsy. Hindsight's always 2020, but the wear portion of this was actually flaking off. I don't think a normal band would actually do that. Now this picture, I had to zoom in with my loop and then take that picture and zoom in with my camera. You see that the keystone indicator at the 12 o'clock position just seems to be a little bit off. Now here's something that no one mentioned in the comments. On the back of these on the diameter, between where it says planet ocean and the 2000 meter water resistance, there's supposed to be a laser etching. That laser etching is to prevent counterfeits. Not really an etching here on the fake one, just seems like some scratches. On the real one, let me zoom in and show you what that is is the globe omega etching and according to the guy on the forums it started in the late 2000s be careful though because even the fakes now will have it here's the opened case back fake ones on the left real ones on the right you can see that they did a pretty good job here now is where we get into the movement this is the fake movement um the rotors all off the movement is actually just not even the right movement nothing's polished i see one or two jewels there should be a number of jewels it's just all off the blue screw holding the rotor down there should be no blue screws in these things this is what it should look like everything's polished lots of jewels everywhere and and actually i believe the serial number should be engraved inside also so hindsight is always 2020 right real easy to be monday morning quarterback and go back and say woulda coulda shoulda as i mentioned in the first video i chalk it up to the price of tuition lessons cost money and luckily this wasn't too expensive of a lesson guys this is not a how-to video i am not saying that if you follow these steps you can go out and you can flip a watch and you cannot get scammed. I'm not saying that. I made this video just to share my experience with you. If I'm saying anything at all, I would say that the message is to not do that. Fakes are getting better and better and there's gonna be better ways to make a buck. Shout out to the owner of the Genuine Seamaster that let me use this video. I'm gonna put the link of his video down below. Check it out, give him some love. And again, shout out to all the people that commented on my original video saying I did the right thing by giving them their money back, putting it out there, and perhaps saving them from a similar situation. Thanks so much for taking the time and writing something down below. I would say in my short-lived YouTube career, I've noticed that about 95% of you guys are real cool people that I would love to sit down and have a beer with someday. I truly appreciate your comments, and honestly, they keep me motivated in doing more of these videos. So I'll wrap it up here. 
As always, if you liked it, please like the video. They really help me out. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I think what I might do is do another one of these videos next on the Spectre Omega that I made a video before on. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.